Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one I'm filming for you in Macau, which is just over the water from Hong Kong, one of the two special administrative regions of China of course. And uh, you know, Macau's a little bit different actually, it's about 10% of the size of Hong Kong, they've only got about 650,000 people here, it's known as being the Las Vegas of Asia, there's a hell of a lot of casinos and a lot of bright lights and stuff like that, and uh, you know, you've got Hong Kong just a little bit over the water. You can go between the two uh, in an hour on the ferry if you like. But for this review we're going to review a beer from the only brewery that are from here in Macau and even at that technically these guys are not from Macau anymore but we'll talk a little bit later about that in the video. So for this review we're going to go to the Macau Beer Company and we're having a taste of their golden ale today. So this one comes in at 4.1% and as the name suggests it is a golden ale. So really looking forward to trying this one. It'll be my first review that I've ever done from these guys and my first taste ever of a Macau beer so hopefully it's a good one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. The Macau beer market incidentally is kind of interesting and we will talk about that a little bit in this video as well. But anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from the Macau beer company very first time I'm tasting one of their beers of course there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there that I'll make for the Macau beers, and hopefully I can add more to that in the near future. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the brewery then, and for reference, for a few of the things that I will say in this video, I'm filming this review for you just at the end of July 2019, so we'll see what happens with the Macau beer market in the future. But anyway, the Macau Beer Company was founded by Mark Merrick back in 1996, and this was the first brewery in the entire history of Macau, its 440 year history. Like I said before, it was a former Portuguese colony or trading post. Um, so Mark is from the US, specifically New Jersey, and he had an education in Asian studies. He also studied in China for a little while, mainland China, and uh, then he went to work in Beijing in the import-export business. It was originally intended that this brewery would be started in Vietnam, but after research they decided on Macau because it didn't already have its own beer brand. But the brewery was based in an old industrial building with around 4,000 square foot of space. They apparently invested around 15 million dollars. The article didn't say whether that was Hong Kong dollars or whether it was US dollars so not exactly sure about that figure but this brewery was located about halfway between the ferry terminal in the northeastern part of Macau or Mac the Macau Peninsula if you like and the, uh, the actual border with mainland China. A few years later in 1999 he sold the brewery to local investors. Incidentally 1999 is when uh, Portugal handed Macau back over to, uh, to mainland China of course. But the local investors ran the company until 2002 and at this point it was bought over by Kirin from Japan who really relabeled the beer simply as Macau beer and they put the ruins of St Paul on the label because it is one of the very famous um, landmarks or symbols if you like of of uh, Macau. Um, but Kieran kept brewing the beer in the original brewery until around 2011, but since then the beer has apparently been brewed at Kieran's facility in Zuhai, which is a little bit over the border um, from Macau. I think you can probably get there in about an hour by car or something like that, but you don't want to drive in, in China. It seems a little, at least I wouldn't, because it seems a little bit crazy both here in, and over in Hong Kong, and the mainland, I'm sure, will be equally as crazy. But um, yeah, that's all I'm really able to tell you about the brewery just now. That was all the information I was able to find on this company, in fact. So originally a little local independent brewery here in Macau, bought, uh, started by an American, bought over by local investors, and then sold to uh, Kieran from from Japan and still run by Kirin but brewed just over the border in uh, in 
uh, Zuhai in China, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, maybe it's like Zuhai or uh, or something like that, the exact pronunciation. So yeah, it started off as a Macau beer, but technically it's not a Macau beer anymore. So that's why I said what I did at the start of the video. But yeah, um, cool to review some a beer from somewhere different. As I always say, it's really cool to try different things from different places. From what I understand, under the brand Macau beer, you will find three different beers. There's the Golden Ale, there's the Macau Draft, which I believe is their sort of pub beer, bar beer, if you like. And you can also get a white ale as well, which I did see in one of the shops. But I thought I would go with the original one for uh, for starters. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as you can see, it's quite nicely presented. You know, it's kind of classic. It kind of reminds you a little bit of the likes of Chang or um, Singha, something like that from Thailand. It's got a similar kind of branding to that, if you like, a little bit like um, Asahi or something like that from Japan as well, which is understandable considering it's set by Kirin. But um, yeah, you know, there's the bottle cap on this one. Uh, and you can see it does have, I don't know if this is a lotus flower, the symbol of Macau, um, but it does have that symbol which you'll see on the Macau flag. Um, so yeah, in the ruins of St Paul down there, which is actually only about three, four hundred metres from my hotel where I'm filming. I do recommend you come and have a little look at Macau for a couple of days. You know, you can do the, the northern part of it in one day and you can do the southern part of it in another day. But yeah, nicely presented beer. This one, very similar, as I said, to the beer, the likes of the beers that you'll find from um, from like Vietnam or Thailand or something like that. So a kind of Southeast Asian type branding on this one almost. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. I'm curious to see how this beer turns out. If I can get the bottle cap open, it doesn't want to come off. Yes, so let's get this guy out and into the glass then. So as you can see, it's a green bottle with this one. And see as soon as I open this up, it really does remind me of some of those Thai beers as well. Singha, Chang, uh, Bintang from Indonesia as well actually reminds me of a little bit. Mm. So most of the beers that you will find here in Macau, of course you can get the things in the shops like Guinness and Heineken, I think you can get Budweiser as well. You will get Taiwan beer as well. Uh, what else have I seen? Uh, so Dingdao of course from mainland China, Heineken, Guinness, Budweiser. There's a few other Chinese beers that you'll um, that you'll see here as well. There's Blue Girl, which seems to be really popular here and in Hong Kong. I think they had that over in Korea as well. And originally that started as a German beer, apparently. And there's a few other um, German beer, uh, Chinese beers and things like that too. And a few other German brands making their way out here. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting that actually, just when you go into different supermarkets and see different things. But as you can see from this beer, it's poured exactly as you would expect from a golden ale. I do apologise for the lighting in this video as I've complained about in uh, this whole Asian sort of series of beers that I've done for you. Getting decent light in Asian hotel rooms and stuff like that can be a little bit difficult. Even in homes as well, you're often relying on artificial light. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured quite a, a deep sort of golden straw amber colour, this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the, the bottom of that head there. The head itself, incidentally, is about a half finger and it's a sort of, um, yeah, it's a sort of kind of creamy colour, this one, rather than being perfect white. But it looks pretty much as you would expect from a gold nail or uh, I'm guessing this one will be somewhat akin to a lager, but we can talk about the difference between a gold nail and a lager in this review as well. But overall, it looks exactly as you'd expect. Nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. As I said to you, this one comes in at 4.1% ABV. So let's have a little look at the aroma and just see how we get on. So straight away with this one, you can pick up on the corny notes of this. It definitely has that sweet sort of corny note to it. A little bit of a, a kind of biscuity quality in there. A little touch of breadiness as well. Um, originally they were using German and American hops in this one and um, I think it was German yeast strains they said they were using. So you can pick up a little bit of a white bread, you know, in there. On top of that, you're getting a sort of bread and butter um, kind of biscuit quality to this one. But it does have a big sort of corn element to it as well, which is, is, uh, is quite interesting. Um, there's a little touch of maybe, would you say, there's a little touch of a sort of um, grassy and floral quality to this one, which is what you'd expect. It does have a little bit of an almost German noble hoppy quality. I'd be interested to know if they are using German hops. You know, the one thing that's interesting about this beer, with it being brewed by a Japanese company, is that if um, 
a smaller brewery is bought over by a Japanese company. The Japanese are almost sticklers for tradition. They don't, you know, if you do want a kind of traditional brewery bought over by a conglomerate, it's best that it's a Japanese one because the Japanese like originality. They like they like changing things. They do improve things, but they don't change them overly. I mean, we've seen that with Pilsner Urquell in Czech Republic, which uh, I forget which one of the big Japanese breweries it is that um, that owns that one now. Um, I think it might be Asahi actually. Um, but yeah, you can definitely smell a nice little bit of a German noble hoppy quality in there. Some light grassiness, a little bit of an apple-y periester, um, and you can also pick up just a little touch of that kind of sweet earthiness in there as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if they are still using a little bit of uh, German hop in this one. I don't know if they grow hops over in uh, mainland China, actually. But yeah, really an interesting smelling beer, this one. Kind of typical with what you would expect from an Asian lager, if you like. Very similar to a Southeast Asian lager, actually. So yeah, a little bit like San Miguel, a little bit like, you know, Singha, Chang, something like that. And as we always say, you know, you can't... You can't really rate macro beers in the same light as you do um, micro brewed beers. So just bear that in mind when we do this tasting. But yeah, let's get stuck into this one then and just see how we get on. This one is the Gold Nail from Macau Beer. Originally based here in Macau, but now over in uh, Zhuhai uh, in mainland China. So let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, uh, Gambe, as we would say. Yeah, so this one to me comes across as being one of the more malty laggers that I've kind of come across, one of the more malty macro laggers. Um, and in fairness, that is the main difference between a golden ale and a lager beer. So this beer definitely has a little bit more of that kind of oily character that you would expect. So this one definitely is a golden ale rather than a lager, and normally these commercially brewed lagers are sitting up there around uh, around 5%. This one is lower than that, it's 4.1%, so the more malty side of things, I don't know why I said it was, it was a, one of the maltier lagers, that's wrong, ignore that comment. But this one definitely fits into that golden ale character quite nicely. It does have a bit of a, a sort of German quality to it, if that makes sense. So yeah, straight away with this beer then, you're going to feel a nice little bit of pale malt just blanketing the middle of your tongue. You can feel that straight away, it's just got that nice sort of light white bready quality. The further you go into the aftertaste with this beer, it's going to sweeten up a little bit. You're getting some of those corny notes out of it that you would pick up from the aroma. In the very centre of your tongue it becomes a little bit more kind of biscuity. There's almost a little teeny bit of a sort of butterscotch quality to this beer which is kind of interesting. That comes out a little bit in the aftertaste. Um, it does have a little bit of that um, it does have a little bit of that slightly woody quality to it as well which is interesting. There is a little bit of an almost woody subtlety to this one going into the aftertaste. In some ways it doesn't have the sort of ricey sweetness that you would expect from some Asian beers. It's definitely leaning more towards the kind of corny side of things. I think this might have a good, it might have a little bit of German malt in there, but I think there will also be some adjuncts and things added to this one, which is, um, which isn't unusual for the macro produced beers in this part of the world. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, you've got a little touch of, um, a little touch of earthiness in there. As you come further forward along the side of the tongue, that smooths out a little bit. Maybe a little touch of a herbal quality in there. At the front corners of the palate, um, there's a little touch of a more floral quality. Then around the very front curve of the tongue, it is just a little bit lighter and grassy. Behind the front curve of the tongue, of course, as I always say, that's where you get that little oily bubble, where those fruity esters come out from the hops. And for me, this is a very straight up, you've got some of that kind of grassy, almost a slightly grassy lemony quality coming out of this one. You've got a nice little touch of an apple peri ester in there as well. But, you know, it's the kind of typical fruity flavours you would expect from a, 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 you know, a macro produced lager. So, I mean, comparing this to other beers, it, um, you know, it's, it is quite a typical Asian um, 
you know, it is type of quite a typical Asian beer, this one, in terms of the sweeter side of it. You know, it does lean towards the sweet malty side of things, which is quite common with a lot of different beers. Definitely not a lager. We'll talk about the mouthfeel now because this one, um, it's at the very bottom end of mid-bodied this. The carbonation is quite smooth in this. The beer, if we put it into the macro brewed category, it really leans towards the oily side of things. You know, there is a little bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. I think you're talking maybe... Uh, probably about 10 IBUs, 15 and an absolute push with this beer. Um, the malt base has a little bit of sweetness to it. You can get some sweetness, I'm guessing, from some adjuncts that they've put in this beer. I guess probably corn and things like that. Uh, and you've also got just a little bit of a fruitiness to it as well. So, I mean, overall, this beer... It has some of the aspects you'd expect of Asian beers. You know, in Asia generally, um, the, the sort of beer drinker, if you like, generally, is more wanting something to clear the throat and to be cool and refreshing. And that this beer is exactly like that, but it's just a little bit thicker in its mouthfeel. It definitely has some of the ale qualities to it. By no means is this a lager, and that's what makes it quite interesting, actually. It's a big produced beer, but it's not a lager. Um, so, I mean, I mean, obviously you get stout, Guinness stout and things like this, but I'm sure, I'm sure you can understand the spirit that is meant with that comment. It's, it's an unusual one, this. It's the first Asian mass-produced beer that I've come across that is not marketed um, as a lager. I mean, the only other thing I can think of offhand is uh, Asahi Black. That's the only other thing at the moment which is uh, which is coming to mind. So um, yeah, interesting point to make about uh, about that this beer. So yeah, it's an interesting one. This if you come to Macau, have a go at it. They've got the white ale as well. I'll see if I can review that for you perhaps on my uh, the next time I make it over to Macau, which I don't know when that will be. But um, yeah, another thing we should say about in this video then is the Macau beer market. So Macau. As I think I mentioned earlier, is only around 650,000 people, something like that. Whereas Hong Kong, if I'm remembering correctly, has somewhere in the region of 7.5 million. So you've got a good number of um, craft breweries over there in Hong Kong now, but you don't have any at the moment in Macau. Maybe that will change in the next few years. I think, from what I was reading, a lot of people were saying that just not a lot of people know too much about craft beer. All the craft beer that you'll find in Macau is um, is basically American, New Zealand, Australian uh, and things like that and a few kind of things making it over from Europe too. So there are a couple of beer bars and things. I will go out to one and maybe film an on-site video for you so we can talk a little bit about that. But yeah, maybe in the future we will see the return of some small independent breweries here in Macau. But only 650,000 people here. Um, the rents of course in Macau and Hong Kong are sky high, so that's one of the other things that's inhibiting a small business like that popping up. But for the meantime, if you want a Macau beer, you are going to have to go with the Macau Beer Company. And this one, you know, compared to other large brewed beers, is actually um, pretty all, it, it's all right. You know, it's, it's actually decent enough. So if you like San Miguel, if you like, you know, like Bintang or uh, yeah, Bintang from Indonesia, you like, uh, you know, Chang and Singhan, in fairness, they're all right. I do like, and I like, the th I kind of enjoy an Asahi and a Sapporo and stuff like that every so often. If you like those kind of beers, then this is a good one to have every so often. So if you come to Macau, try it. I'm really not sure how widely available this beer is outside of Macau, of course, so do let me know if you happen to stumble across this in any other place. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this review. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Like I said, this is the only review I'll be filming for you in Macau, and it's probably going to be my last Macau beer review for you for a little while. Hopefully the next time I come back here there are a few craft beers to review for you because the, the, from what I gather they do seem to be coming uh, a little bit more aware of craft beer here now uh, in mainland China and in Macau and Hong Kong of course does have quite a thriving uh, craft beer scene too. So we'll see how that goes over the next few years but I hope you've enjoyed my take on this one and we'll leave it at that. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know which of the Macau Beer Company's beers is your favourite one and of course if you are watching this, this beer review a little bit later than July 2019 then do please keep me up to date on what's going on in the craft beer scene in Macau if it does indeed start to exist then. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. This one is the Gold Nail from the Macau Beer Company, part of Kirin from Japan and brewed in uh, Yuhai over the border in mainland China. Until the next time, Slanja just now and I'll catch you guys later. My last review in this Asian mini-series as well. Slanja, Skull, Gambi.